Hey there, folks. This is Chapter 12 Notes Slides, and there's quite a few slides. Let's see. There's 28 total, and let's get through as much as we can, and uh, we may need a second video to get through them all. Uh, here you're going to get an ink pad, just like it says right here. It says in your notebook, so that's really what you want to look for each, for each slide is in your notebook. What does it want you to do? It says get your, so it normally gives instructions or just ask questions. So let's see. It gives instructions here, and then later we have some questions to think about. And as always, most slides have URLs. They're either hyperlink active where you just right click and then you can go straight to it, or you need to copy and paste the URL. But it's going to take you to a PBS video that will help you answer these questions. In every slide that you find, it's your responsibility to copy and paste or just click on the URL and watch the video. It's meant to help you. It's meant to provide more information to better understand the questions and the ideas on the slide. All right. Anyhow, it says get your. Uh, the first thing is to get your ink, uh, inked print. So you'd ask the teacher for an ink pad. You're gonna get the ink on your thumb, and then with some scrap paper. You may not have a notebook, but if you just have some scrap paper or whatever you're writing notes on, um, you just put your fingerprint down, and then study it and find out which pattern it is. Is it pattern A, B, or C? After that, uh, like just like it says here, what pattern do you have? You you put well, I have A, B, or C. And then following that, it just in general, uh, using the information from the video, as well as just thinking on your own, well, what's a real crime or potential crime where fingerprints um, might solve a crime? And what is it about fingerprints that helps actually identify a criminal? So think about it. It's food for thought. All right, let's keep moving. All right, so this is slide two. This is about pedigrees. And pedigrees are defined right here. It says they're a graphic representation, a model, which is a visual uh, representation of genetic inheritance, so what parents give to their children. And that's just what on this slide it wants you to think about. So it says in your notebook, use the symbols to the left, that's this box right here, to show a man, a woman, and their three kids. One boy, two girls. Ah, so this slide isn't too hard, it just wants you to practice from the first, it, not too much thinking. So there's a, a guy here, there's a girl, there's a horizontal bar, meaning that they've reproduced, they've had sex, basically. And they've had some kids. Uh, so you have two daughters and a son. So what it wants you to do, so in your notes, your job is to uh, basically write what this means. So instead of drawing what it means, you're just writing in words. It's a mom and dad, and they uh, reproduced three times, and they ended up with two daughters and one son. So you're just writing in words what this means. Here we have slide three. You have a pedigree, and this time all you have to do is write it in words again, but what does this mean? So write it in words what this means. And then we have some URLs here, another PBS video, and a YouTube video that'll help you uh, start understanding a little better what pedigrees are, and to better understand what these are trying to represent with these symbols. <clears throat> Here we are, next slide. We have carrier. So the idea of a carrier is someone who's heterozygous. That means they have a recessive uh, version, sorry, a little r right here, recessive version, and a dominant version of a gene. Now, the name, if you recall, from chapter uh, uh, 10 and also 11, all previous genetics chapters, is a version of a gene is called an allele. And everyone has two alleles for each of their genes. And in this example, uh, in your notebook, we're following the inheritance of bad breath. And so what your job is, is in your notebook or in your scratch paper, draw this pedigree right here, the one that boxed in red. So draw everything you see right here. And then your job after that is to label each of these people, person one, two, three, four, person five, six, seven, and eight, you're to give them the proper alleles, and you're either going to give them homozygous dominant, heterozygous, or carrier, just like the slide is about, or homozygous recessive. You have to, and it also wants, right below here, let's scroll down a little more, it wants you to identify which are carriers. So maybe just circle them, but everybody here should get uh, two alleles each, and what would those be? All right. Here we have a slide that you're going to want to print. 
And so let me just show you how to print one slide, just in case you didn't know, and make sure you print on the right uh, uh, page or slide number, and, and you're printing in the right classroom. So this is slide, um, let's see here, slide five. And just heads up, slide six, you're gonna wanna print two. So I'm just gonna show you, how would you print two slides if you want? And I'll even show you how to do uh, front and back so you don't waste paper. So you're gonna come over here. There's a little uh, print icon here, you can use that. And it says pages here. This is where you're gonna select, you would select uh, slide five and six, I believe. So five through six. So now it only print those two slides, which are now kind of printed worksheets that you're gonna fill out. And then you need to make sure you have the right printer. So you click change right here, and you're gonna choose room five. So every one of the school printers has this strange code, but at the very end, if you just are patient, you'll see room, and my classroom is room five. So you print from there. Now I'm not really gonna print it. I'm just gonna hit cancel. But you'd go on to select room five, which is already on uh, often. You'd select the page, which is five and six, and then you hit print. If you don't do that, it either won't print to this room or you're gonna end up printing 30 slides and you may not wanna do that. We wanna save trees, so let's not do that. So I'm gonna hit cancel. All right, let's keep going. So let's look at the question overall though. This is about cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis, it says, is autosomal recessive. So basically anyone that's fully shaded in they have, they're, they're recessive. They've inherited two recessive alleles, and judging by the letter they're using, they're using A's, this fully shaded person would be little a, little a. Notice they have blanks, so yes, that's right. You gotta, uh, once you print it, you need to fill these blanks in with what you think those people have. The hard thing is, is you have to figure out um, if you have to shade some of these people in. So there's a lot here that are blank, that doesn't mean that they don't have the disease. It doesn't mean that they don't have cystic fibrosis. What it means is that you have to decide if you need to shade it in or not. If someone is normal, you don't shade them in at all. Like this person is homozygous dominant, and remember the disease is recessive, and they have homozygous dominant, so they're not carriers, they're not affected by cystic fibrosis, so you don't even shade this in at all. But this person over here, you'd fully shade them in. It's already shaded for you for this one, but these you may find out you need to fully shade in also. You may, you may not. But you put, but in this blank here, you'd certainly put uh, little a, little a, or homozygous recessive. This person is affected with cystic fibrosis. Now, to half shade something in means they're carrier, just like the last slide uh, suggested, and they're heterozygous. Now, in order to, fill, to figure out what each of these other people, like person three, in order to figure out what they have, or this father right here, what he has, his two alleles, we really have to look at the children. And that's the strategy to solve any pedigree problem, is look at the children, look at them, and figure out, based on the kids, what do these parents have? So the kids really tell you a story. And this child has the disease, cystic fibrosis. They inherited it from their parents. And if they're fully shaded in, it means they're little a, little a. And guess what? Um, if they're little a, little a, it means each parent donated one little a. So that means mom must have one little a at least, and dad also must have one little a at least also. So we're halfway there. We know that this father has at least one recessive allele, and the mom also has the little a, or the recessive allele. But let's look at the other child. The other child they had is homozygous dominant. He got a big a, or a dominant a allele, from both parents too. This one from mom, this one from dad. And what that means is, is both parents not only have a recessive A, but they have dominant A's also. So you'd actually half shade these parents in. The father would be a carrier then, and this would be half shaded in as a carrier. Just like this first person here, which in this situation would be a grandma. All right, your job is to do the same for these, person five, person six, person seven, and also uh, make sure you fill in the blanks for these people afflicted with cystic fibrosis. And then on that same worksheet, you gotta, you gotta say, what's the phenotype of all these individuals? We did, we figured it out already for person number three. Individual number three, which is a mom, she was a carrier, so you'd write carrier. All right, so just like it says in your notebook, um, write the alleles for each person, and also answer questions two through seven, right here, two through seven. All right, let's go on to the next slide. It's the same type of problem, the only difference is this uh, disorder is albinism, or uh, being an albino, and it says it's caused 
by recessive allele. So once again, you have a disease caused by recessive alleles, not dominant ones, but recessive. So if they're fully shaded in, they have the genetic disorder, otherwise known in this situation as being an albino, and you'd put little a, little a for them. So fill it out as best you can. And if you need a reminder, this kind of gives you ideas. It says study the children's phenotype to determine the parents. It says in the blanks below, write their genotype. So these are the blanks below. So blank, 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 and blank. So any blank you see, you need to uh, designate the two alleles that person number five has, person seven, person eight, you know, anyone with a blank. All right, good luck. This slide is a repeat. No need to worry about it. Let's move on to this one. This is autosomal. And let's figure out what autosomal means. Autosomal basically means a gene found on one of the 22 chromosomes uh, other than the sex chromosome. So any chromosome that is not X chromosome or Y chromosome is called autosomal. And so scientists or doctors, anytime you inherit a disease that's not linked to a sex chromosome like X or Y, it is called an autosomal disease. Here in the to-do, in your notebook, you have to figure out which of these three diseases is autosomal. This disease is found on the X chromosome, and it tells you the gene involved on the chromosome. Its name is IL2RG gene. Then you have sickle cell disease. That's found on chromosome 11. The gene responsible for sickle cell disease is called the hemoglobin gene. And here, importantly enough, uh, is it also shows you what the protein that the gene makes. It tells you what it looks like. So this is a normal hemoglobin, but if something happens to the gene uh, mutation, uh, it can change the shape of the protein. This is much longer now, and it causes the blood cells to even look longer or sickle-shaped. So you have to ID which diseases are autosomal. So for this one, you'd say, oh, this is on chromosome 7. Based on the definition, you have to decide is it autosomal or not. And then you have to give the name of the gene. So in your scrap paper, you'd say, well, cystic fibrosis is autosomal or not. You'd say the name of the gene right here is what the name of the gene of this one is. And then you need to talk about the protein that the gene produces, you know, specific to the disease. So the, the normal protein, you know, it does its job. And read right here to see what it does. And you need to explain what it does normally. And then you need to say, well, if the gene gets mutated, it's going to produce a mutant uh, protein. And in this example, it's called a mutant channel for cystic fibrosis. And it shows you basically what that looks like. What does the protein look like and what is it doing or not doing that leads to disease? So for each of these, if you can, you're to talk not only about the chromosome, not only about the gene name, but the protein and what's going on with the protein to cause the disease. And for a severe combined immunodeficiency, lucky you, there's nothing with protein, so all you can really talk about is the chromosome evolved and the gene. All right. Notice that there is a YouTube video here, and I'd expect you to click on that YouTube video and watch it so it can help you learn. All right, let's move on to this one for the last part of this uh, video, and then um, we'll do slides 10 through 28, hopefully on the second one. All right, your job basically is to study this table. There are three different traits, number of fingers, tongue rolling, or cystic fibrosis, and it symbolizes them by dominant or recessive alleles. And you're going to use these alleles here and the codes, the D, T, or Cs, dominant or recessive, to answer questions one and three. So remember, it's in your notebook, questions one and three only. So that means you get to skip two, and you're going to, it says you're going to produce Punnett squares, or a four-box Punnett square, simple Punnett square is just a four-box one. So... Try to recall from chapter 10 or look in the chapter 10 notes that you have. Look at your chapter 10 worksheet or look at the chapter 10 uh, textbook uh, just to try to remember how to fill out a four square punnet if you don't recall. But for 1A, you need to make a punnet square. For 1B, punnet square and 1C. And then 3A, you need to make a punnet square. 3B, you need to make a punnet square. And you base that on the situation. So it says here 1A is both parents are heterozygous or six fingers. So if you're heterozygous for six fingers, you find this one. This is D. If you're heterozygous, you're big D, little d, uh, or dominant D allele and uh, recessive D allele. And both parents are that way. And then you set the Punnett square up. And each of these is a different scenario. And when you try to figure out what symbols to use, you just refer to the table. So one is about the six fingers. And then three is about um, cystic fibrosis again. 
And here's a graphic also for that. All right, good luck.